The October 26, 2009 meeting of the Public Safety Committee will now come to order. Will the clerk please call the roll? Mrs. Straw. Yes. Mr. Antelli. Yes. Mr. Beebe. Yes. Mr. Eckel. Yes. Mr. Lee. Yes. Mr. Lightfoot. Yes. Mr. McCann. Yes. Mr. Yolovich. Yes. President, or excuse me, Chairman Hanna. Here. Before we move on to the public forum, I would like to welcome Rachel Gray from Aquinas Institute. She's here uh, studiously taking notes, I see. Um, are you, you're doing some participation work, in participation in government work. Very good, welcome. Next item on the agenda is the public forum. Is there anyone signed up for the public forum this evening? There is not. Is there anyone present who would like to address the committee at this time? Seeing none. We will move on to the approval of minutes. You have before you the September 21st, 2009 minutes. They will stand approved unless the clerk is notified of any change by the end of the day. Next item, new business. Madam Clerk. Referral 090310. Moved by Legislator Draw. <laughs> Seconded by Legislator Yolovich. Is there any discussion? Seeing none, all those in favor signify by saying aye. 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 All those opposed? Item carries. Next item. Referral 090311. Moved by Legislator Yolovich, seconded by Legislator McCann. Is there any discussion? Legislator Lee. The Chair to the Administration, uh, what type of effects would this decrease have on the programs and the recipients? Through the chair, I, I believe the question is, is how much of an impact would the reduction in funding and the grant amount have on the provision of services? Was that yes. Uh, there were no discernible impact on the provision of services. The grant funding uh, goes to partially fund the uh, salaries of two assistant public defenders. So the reduction from a previous year of $2,000 uh, will be offset by other cuts in the, in the uh, public defender budget, so it won't result in the reduction of services. Okay. And uh, also part two of this question, um, number of cases do the uh, public defenders manage? Uh, through the chair, uh, last year the public defender's office represented approximately 815 parolees. Uh, we anticipate that number to be comparable this year. Okay. And also through the chair to the administration, uh, this fund salary? I'm sorry? Is this fund salary? Is the fund yes, salary? correct. This grant uh, through the chair funds, uh, partially funds uh, the salaries of two assistant public defenders that deal with parole matters. Okay, thank you. Thank you. Is there any other discussion? Seeing none, all those in favor signify by saying aye. Aye. All those opposed? Item carries. Next item. Referral 090312. Moved by Legislator McCann, seconded by Legislator Antelli. Is there any discussion? Uh, thank you. Uh, through the chair, uh, what, do we have a forecasted increase uh, or, excuse me, forecasted impact on the backlog of cases uh, for this uh, referral or as a result of this referral? Thank you. Through the chair. Um, Impacting in what facet of the laboratory? Uh, it, I'm looking for, um, excuse me, uh, this is the laboratory capacity enhancement program uh, through the chair. What is the forecast, uh, forecasted impact on the backlog of cases? Is there a backlog of cases in uh, this? It looks like it's uh, biologists. Yes, currently, oh, sorry, through the chair. Uh, currently, the backlog in DNA analysis is um, approximately 980 cases. Um, the grant funds 10 biologists. Um, currently, two of those biologists are in training, and um, the funds will um, show uh, an increase in the amount based on uh, when those people are trained, and there are three people who have recently been trained that are already producing um, approximately two times the amount of cases that we uh, processed in prior years. Okay, um, so 
they're, they're going to have an impact on the cases through the chair. Do we have an idea? There are 10 biologists coming on. How many do you have on there right now? Through the chair, all of those positions are, are current positions. They are not n new positions. So um, some of the positions will have an impact once the people are trained. There is also some positions that are ser serologists or biologists who are screening evidence. Mm -hmm. So once those people are through their training, uh, we will see it in increase in the amount of cases, but there are, there are no new um, people to be hired. Uh, thank you very much. And uh, through the chair, now I see there's a, an increase of 322,000. Is this large increase due to the longer time period of the grant? Through the chair, excuse me. Oh, okay. okay. Through the chair, um, last year's grant was, was five months, and this is an annualized number. Okay, thank you very much. Is there any other discussion? Seeing none, all those in favor signify by saying aye. 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 <coughs> Opposed? Item carries. Referral 090313. Moved by Legislator Antelli, seconded by Legislator Draw. Is there any discussion? Legislator Echo. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Um, through the chair, what were the previous grant amounts in the first two years? Through the chair, we do not have the figures for two years ago. Uh, the figure for last year was three hundred forty-eight thousand, approximately four hundred sixty. Okay. Thank you very much. And through the chair, uh, is there any indication as to whether this funding will continue to go up once the new crime lab is built and our capabilities are expanded? Through the chair, uh, we don't have any um, prediction to, to what the future of the funding will be. Thank you very much. And uh, through the chair, is this for staffing goods, both? Um, through the chair, some of the funds are for staff members. Others are for um, calibrations and things that maintain our accreditation. Thank you very much. Is there any other discussion? Seeing none, all those in favor signify by saying aye. All those opposed? Item carries. Next item. Referral 090314. Moved by Legislator Draw, seconded by Legislator Yelovich. Is there any discussion? Legislator Draw. Are there any statistics um, in this, uh, the success of this program in the past few years that you have on it? To the, to the success of it? Uh, uh, through the chair, yes. Uh, in our application, uh, the past this, this this funding, we uh, did a review of the. Uh, in 2008, we had five major impact uh, joint patrol periods, and uh, during that time, the uh, during let's see. The overall reduction in crime in the targeted neighborhoods was 11.8 percent. For the uh, comparing the 2007 period to 2008, I mean. During uh, three of the uh, joint patrols, the, uh, uh, there was a uh, net decrease in violent crime, and the other two, there was a slight increase. So, but overall, it was about 11.8% reduction. And also, through you, Mr. Chair, um, are there any other counties in New York State that um, uh, take part in this, uh, in the impact programs? Uh, through the Chair, there are 17 counties that are uh, funded. Th these are counties outside of New York City. Okay. Thank you. Is there any other discussion? Lee. Yes, thank you. Through the chair, is there a report available that summarized the performance and the impact of this program thus far? Uh, through the chair, yes, I can uh, provide you with a, uh, there was a strategy assessment uh, done. It was part of the application for this funding, and it's basically a two-page report that goes through all that information. So uh, that is available, uh, and I can get that to you. I appreciate it. Thank you. Okay. Can all the members of the committee be provided with a copy of that report to send it to the Great. 
Could you do that, please? Um, certainly, Thank you. Chair. Is there any other discussion? Legislator Adams. Thank you very much, Mr. Chairman. Uh, through the chair, um, could you tell me what neighborhoods uh, were targeted? Uh, through the chair, I don't have that specific information. Can we get yeah. that information? Uh, I believe so, yes. Okay, thank you very much. Is there any other discussion? Seeing none, all those in favor signify by saying aye. aye. All those opposed? Aye. Item carries. Next item. Referral 0903315. Move. Moved by Legislator Yolovich, seconded by Legislator McCann. Are there any questions? Legislator Yolovich. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. What are a few of the outcomes that are expected from this program? Okay, who's in second? You want to, you want to get it first and I get the second half? No, oh, okay. Uh, through the chair, the uh, main impact. Uh, the goal of this program is to, uh, for those uh, defendants that are eligible, to make sure that they get enhanced sentences wherever possible. And uh, in last year's program, uh, let's see, 75 percent of the defendants convicted were sent to state prison for, uh, these were all violent felonies of one sort or another. And of those, 40 percent received enhanced sentences of, you know, a second felony offender, a violent felony offender, that kind of thing. Uh, we anticipate that the that is the goal of the program will continue to, to uh, try to maintain that kind of a uh, uh, sentencing record. And again, this is, you know, based on uh, uh, pre-trial uh, uh, pre-sentence investigations and you know, the ultimately the judges make the final decisions on this. We just provide them with the information. Would you just give us a quick explanation of enhanced sentencing through you, Mr. Chairman? Uh, through the chair, certainly, sir. Uh, the uh, basic sentence for, let's say, uh, possession of a, uh, uh, of a firearm may be uh, two years. But if someone has a prior felony conviction, uh, that sentence can be doubled uh, or thereabouts. And so the goal of the program is to make sure that any time that's a situation where there could be an enhanced sentence. In other words, instead of getting the minimum, they will get a, a uh, longer prison sentence. But we make sure we, we have the paperwork together and do the research so that when the judge makes that decision, he has information in front of him. Thank you. Is there any other discussion? No, oh, we're, we're not done yet. Uh, through the chair, the public defender portion of this grant is used to fund the salaries of uh, five assistant public defender positions as well as a chief investigator and the primary purpose of the grant is to allow our office sufficient staffing to provide what's known as vertical representation in violent felony representation in those types of cases. Uh, vertical representation means an attorney is assigned as soon as the case enters the criminal justice system and that uh, client will have that attorney throughout the course of the representation. So that's the goal of the, the, this grant. Thank you. Just one quick follow-up. I noticed that there's a uh, a considerable decrease in the amount of money we're getting. Is this going to have a significant effect on the program or not? Well, through the chair, as far as the public defender uh, is concerned, uh, although there was a uh, cut in funding of approximately 42000 over last year's funding, uh, we will not lose a, a, an attorney position as a result. So the answer is no. And for the attorney's office, uh, we will, uh, we had to leave a uh, position vacant for a short period of time to make up the difference, but there's been no impact in the actual prosecution of cases as a result. Thank you very much. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Welcome. Any other discussion? Legislator like <coughs> To you, Mr. Chairman, uh, what impact will the decrease have on recipients of the public defender service, if any, to you, Mr. Chairman? Uh, through the chair, there, there won't be a discernible impact as a result of the decrease in the funding. Uh, the, uh, we are not forced to lay off any assistant public defenders, so those same public defenders will be there representing those clients. Thank you. Is there any other discussion? Seeing none, all those in favor signify by saying aye. Aye. All those opposed? Item carries. Next item. Referral 090317. Moved by Legislator.
Legislator McCann, seconded by Legislator Antelli. Is there any discussion? Seeing none, all those in favor signify by saying aye. aye. All those opposed? Item carries. Referral 090318. Moved by Legislator Antelli, seconded by Legislator Draw. Is there any discussion? Legislator Lightfoot. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Just interested of who was the previous service provider through you, Mr. Chairman? Through the chair, it was Delphi Services. Thank you. Is there any other discussion? Seeing none, all those in favor signify by saying aye. Aye. All those opposed? Aye. Item carries. Next item. Referral 090319. Move it, Mr. Chairman. I move by Legislator Draw, seconded by Legislator Yolovich. Any discussion? Legislator Lee. Through the chair to the administration, will the two positions created by this grant be continued after the stimulus money runs out? Uh, through the chair, uh, at this point we don't know. We are certainly going to be lobbying the New York State Division of Probation and Correctional Alternatives to uh, continue this stimulus money to keep these two probation officers uh, employed. And at the same time, the state is indicating that they are going to reassess the number of uh, cases that probation receives uh, because of the law changes and perhaps even increase funding to the counties. Okay, thank you. Um, through the chair to the administration, the 2010 budget shows a cut in the personnel line for probation. For probation. Um, could you tell me basically uh, how do these funds tie in? Uh, through the chair, I believe after legislative action in this regard, uh, there would be the opportunity to refund some of those uh, uh, non-funded positions. That's uh, a requirement of this uh, stimulus money. We had to prove that we were um, either creating brand new positions or providing opportunities where local funds did not exist. Okay. And uh, through the chair to the administration, one more question. Uh, reason for the 2010 decrease. Could you, uh, through the chair, could you repeat the yes. uh, question? Uh, could you also explain to me the reason for, uh, for the 2010 decrease? Under order, Mr. Chair, that has nothing to do with it. Basically, it does. It has for a decrease in funding. It has for a decrease in the funding. Um, so I'd like to know the reason why. There was a, de there was a, a amount decreased in the funding. Right, in the 2010. So I'd like to know what was the reason for that decrease. I'm going to allow that question. Mr. Chairman, I, I think that might be more appropriate uh, when uh, folks are here from the budget office during the presentation of the budget. We don't we're not really prepared to answer that at this time. All right. We don't have anybody no. here to answer. That. Okay. As long as we can get an answer at some point in time. Is there any other discussion? Seeing none, all those in favor signify by saying aye. aye. All those opposed? Item carries. Referral 090320. Moved by Legislator Yolovich, seconded by Legislator McCann. Is there any discussion? Thank you, Mr. Lake. Chairman. Uh, what is the recidivism rate of criminals that have gone through the Monroe County local reentry program since it started in 2006? Through you, Mr. Chairman, to the administration. Uh, through the chair, uh, the uh, the recidivism rate varies uh, each each year. It's varied. It varies based on whether you're talking about new offenses committed by returning offenders or technical violations of probation. Uh, but we're we're running at about a 10 percent or 11 percent failure rate with regard to uh, individuals committing new offenses and being returned to the state prison. So that is. Uh, an incredible reduction from the 50 or 60 or more percent of offenders reoffending without the services available through reentry. There's been a significant decrease. Decrease through you, Mr. Chairman, uh, in the new offenders or the repeat offenders? Because in the new offenders, what, if I'm not understand, just want to understand you correctly, that it appears with with new offenders, it's 10 to an 11 percent failure rate. Correct, through you, Mr. Chairman. 
through the, through the chair, these are all offenders who have been in state prison, so uh, they, they may have been repeat offenders uh, with, with a long history of criminal arrests, but they're, they're first time reentry clients in our program. Okay. So that you, what, you, what you're saying to, to you, Mr. Chairman, is that that number used to be 50%, which is now de decreased to 10 to 11%. Through the chair, the state puts out uh, figures that talks about a 50 or even 60 percent failure rate mm -hmm. with little or no services for all offenders. Mm -hmm. uh, this program requires that we, we select uh, high-risk offenders, so it's, it's not every offender on parole, but it's those who have significant needs with regard to sobriety, housing, employment, or other factors. And among those 200 or so per year, uh, only about an 11% failure rate is what we're seeing. Okay, through you, Mr. Chairman, in the grant, it mentions about uh, David's Place. Can we be provided with a little more information about this David's Place? Through you, Mr. Chairman. Through the chair, uh, <clears throat> David's Place is the, the name of this, this enhancement. This is an enhancement to our existing reentry program. Okay. Uh, it's based on a New York City program that was created uh, after the shooting of a, of a New York City police officer in a very high crime neighborhood, um, I believe in the borough of Manhattan. And it requires or, or calls for all parties getting together when an offender returns home. The family, the offender, uh, the local police officer who might know that, that area, the parole officer or probation officer, uh, the local minister or, or other person of the faith community, a mentor, and they all meet at this, uh, what we will call David's Place. On a regular basis, there's a free exchange of information. Uh, there's a good deal of victim services to try to keep make victims whole after the offender returns from state prison. Uh, it needs to be uh, set up in a higher crime neighborhood of our community, and that has not been identified yet. Um, and it, it, it involves uh, a greater involvement of family as opposed to one-on-one -on -one work with just the offender. Through you, Mr. Chairman, I would hope that um, it, it's exciting to see that that hasn't been established yet. And uh, we, you know, quite naturally, those of us who are representing neighborhoods who might be higher of crime uh, would advocate that we look possibly at, at the city model of targeting uh, neighborhoods and, and look at that as, as, as options for uh, possibly using, you know, since the data is already there and the resources people are partnering already, it seems like in those individual neighborhoods that this county should should be a partner in that as well. So I would I would want that for the record to hope that we would look at studying or, or, or approaching that in that manner. I think it's logical and makes a lot of sense and it's a good um, way to utilize taxpayer dollars for this county. Um, my last question through you, Mr. Chairman, is uh, will this be a reoccurring grant? Uh, through the chair, this is a uh, federal Second Chance Act grant. Uh, we will certainly, after the, the, the time period that the grant is about to expire, we'll be reapplying, and we're hopeful of, of refunding the program. Thank you. Is there any other discussion? Seeing none, all those in favor signify by saying aye. aye. All those opposed? Item carried. Next item. Referral 090322. Moved by Legislator McCann, seconded by Legislator Antelli. Is there any discussion? Seeing none, all those in favor signify by saying aye. All those opposed? Item carries. Next item. Referral 090323. Moved by Legislator Antelli, seconded by Legislator Draw. Is there any discussion? Legislator Eccles. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Uh, through you to the administration, um, what is the number of uh, cases uh, Monroe County typically sends to Oneida County through this program? Uh, Mr. Chairman, I don't have those figures in front of me. Unfortunately, there's not a representative here right now from the Sheriff's Office, um, but I can get that information for you before the Ways and Means Committee meeting, if that's acceptable. Thank you very much, and uh, through the Chair, uh, also, if we can get a typical annual cost of this program, because I know this grant um, doesn't exceed $25,000. So, thank you. 
Is there any other discussion? Seeing none, all those in favor signify by saying aye. aye. All those opposed? Item carries. Next item on the agenda is uh, other matters. Are there any other matters to come before the committee? Seeing none, the October 26, 2009 meeting of the Public Safety Committee stands adjourned. The next meeting will be November 16, 2009 at 5 p.m.